Today, we're walking Hadrian's Wall, one of the biggest flexes of the Roman Empire and most notorious British landmarks. We'll see baby sheep. Hi, hey guys. You're in the vlog. Yeah, you too. You're famous. Learn more about the walls that are nearly 2,000 years old. Go hitchhiking. Apparently I look scary. And explore some of the most beautiful, relaxing parts of the UK. Ah, there's a butterfly chasing me. So buckle up. Oh yeah, and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that now. This channel isn't monetized yet, but with your support, we can get there. Let's go explore Hadrian's Wall. So we're walking through this field, like many other fields on the trail, and I found my next fellow hiker. Check out this guy. He's trying to go on the trail with me. Baby sheep. Baby sheep. Do you ever wonder when you're walking on these trails what it would be like if you could just like have a pet baby sheep walking on the trail? Because <laughs> I do. <laughs> So this sheep here has been trying to take down the foam pole. <laughs> Dude, I don't think that's what the foam pole is for. <laughs> Does your head itch? Yeah? I'm sorry, it is really hot and you have a lot of fur on. So we're in a new sheep field here and there's like black and white baby sheeps here and they're so cute. Now most of the black and white baby sheeps are uh, sleeping in the shade by their parents. But this little guy, hi little guy, how are you? Aren't they cute? Okay, if I told you this has been here for like 2000 years, would you believe me? I think you should. So we're entering right now a very special part of the wall. Now the part of the wall that we're entering is where archeologists have finally figured out how to see how tall Hadrian's wall actually was. Let's go check it out. Here it's been torn down a little bit and you can tell it's by some stone cutters and that sort of stuff. And check to see how these bricks are very uniform. Like it's hard to tell, but all very uniform. Hello and welcome to Hadrian's Wall. Now this is part of the wall that was built nearly two thousand years ago. Yeah, in the early 180, there was this dude named Hadrian. Now Hadrian was amazing at doing one thing, building walls. And so that's what he did here. See, the emperor before him was super into expanding the Roman Empire. In fact, he wanted to go even further up north and conquer Scotland. But there was this dangerous, angry people called the Picts. Now, if you're Scottish, and I've worn my Scottish lawyer shirt for a reason, you know that there's more to the Picts than just the little tribe that existed for a while. Well, the Romans used that as a derogatory word for anyone in Britannia who was not a Roman. What happened is that the emperor before Hadrian wanted to expand up north. He couldn't, he felt. Hadrian came here and was like, bro, we got a bunch of people down here in the south, in the Middle East and in North Africa who are trying to conquer our area. What if we just secure what we have here and worry about the people up north later? So he did what he was good at, building walls. And one thing that was interesting about Britannia is that there was no natural land bridges to build the wall with or to build any natural thing with. So you have the Rhine River, you have the Euphrates that are all helping to define the Roman Empire down south. But what did we have up north? Nothing. So Hadrian made this. So every one to two kilometers, every Roman mile, there was a fort like this one that was built. So from this fort here behind us 
Archaeologists were able to tell that Hadrian's Wall stood an impressive 12 feet tall. Now just imagine if you're in the year 100 AD, whenever people average the height of like five feet, and you see this 12 foot wall, it was bigger than anything anyone had ever seen before. Oh, we need pants on. We have some brand new babies here. Look how tiny that one is. Okay. In the grand scheme of things, that's how tiny it is. You did a good job. Your baby's very cute. Yeah. Hi. I'm looking for my trail, don't worry. Look how cute you are. Yep, you're in the blog. Let's cross this little trail. Sheep toll. I think this is the way. For over 80 miles between the North Sea and the Irish Sea, this wall stood. Here, we can see a artist's rendition of how it stood. Now, one thing I want to show you from this nice photo. So there are these walls here, or the like, natural barrier thingy here that was built to protect the wall. And this is the wall that we see every, see this little tower here? This is the little guard tower that we saw. Now, every Roman mile, that tower existed. So the trenches that we see on either side of the wall were actually built by the Romans. We're not really sure why, other than to defend from the super scary Picts. Not the Scottish tribe, but anyone living north of Britannia. Now there's evidence today that this huge wall was actually painted white. So when the sun shone, it would just glimmer in light. Now how scary would that have been to see this super shiny thing just staring at you? You shall not cross. Okay, so we're standing right now at the junction point between the broad wall and the narrow wall. Now from over here, that's where it's broad. That's where it's like 10 or 12 feet wide. And then in front of us, we're now gonna explore the narrow wall. For over six years, over 15,000 people built this wall. Multiple, multiple legions of people. And it's pretty cool to see it still standing today with like the original limestone. Now the white that we see on the wall today is not left from the Roman times. That's just a bunch of mold and nature taking over the wall. But we do know it was painted white with some stuff that the archaeologists have done and a bunch of different studies. So I think it's super cool that this used to be big. Really, really big. Okay, let's go explore more of it. All in all, we're just another brick in the wall. Now walking on the Roman side of the Roman wall. And just imagine it, like today it's about maybe three meters, two meters high. Now imagine it two more meters up there, like all the way up there. This would have been a pretty epic sight. So what happened to the wall? Well, I'm really glad you asked me. See, in the 18th century, the UK went through a massive industrial revolution. Railroad tracks and steam and roads were built all over the UK. And this was the time during Queen Victoria was reign. And Mr. Sir Brunel that we saw down in Bristol. What happened is that a large part of the wall was chopped off and the stone was reused for the roads. Now, you may think it was there for so many hundreds of years. Why did people have to rip it down? Because at the time, we didn't have UNESCO. We didn't appreciate history as we do now. And so, they just chopped it up. So I'm really glad that they left what they did today. Because it's pretty cool. I mean, just look how 
crisp these cuts are. I can't get over it, you guys. Check it out. Roman wall. So what happened? Let's talk as we go down these stairs because that sounds like a very dangerous thing to do. So after Hadrian stopped being emperor, mostly after he died, um, the emperor after him was like, bro, we gotta go conquer those pigs. Those Scottish people have the bagpipes and we need the bagpipes. Okay, maybe not, but it just sounds good for the story. So he went up and he tried to conquer the Scottish people and he built his own wall. Now his own wall is about half the size of this and it's at the smallest part of the British island. He built his wall though out of turf. So it went up way faster. I mean, check this out. You guys have to see this, will I? Tell you my story. He was unable, again, to conquer the Scottish people. You see one thing about people from the North? We are very, very strong. You will not tell us what to do. Especially if you are from the tropics, like Rome. So after that dude stopped becoming emperor, and there's a reason why I'm only naming Hadrian and a couple of emperors, because I like them. Um, Marcus Aurelius came into town. Oh, you may know Marcus Aurelius from Stoic thought and Stoic philosophy. Well, yep, same one. He was also a Roman Empire. Empire? He was an emperor. Dude, English needs better words. He was a Roman emperor. Um, Marcus Aurelius came in and he was like, guys, we have the south of our empire is in chaos. We cannot defend that far north. So he pulled the Roman empire back and Hadrian's wall became the extent of how far north it was leaving the Scottish people to lie in peace. Now, why do we know this happened and why do we know it was true? Well, because in Scotland, there's not really a lot of Roman artifacts. Sure, there's an like odd coin, but it's a very small denomination coin, meaning that we don't think there was a lot of trade of value that happened between the Roman Empire and the Northern Caledonia or Scotland. Okay, so check this out. It's over here, as you can see, there's a little river because it's nice and green. And this, obviously, the wall. So when it was built, when Hadrian built it, this is what it looked like. So this would be the river, and then this would be this little guard tower here. Bunka, bunka, bunka. And then some other stuff is over here. Now, a couple years later, whenever Hadrian's successor came, they expanded the thingy. And then finally, Marcus Aurelius came, and this is more of how it looked when he solidified the Roman Empire back down at Hadrian's Wall, where you could actually take a tiny little donkey up and over the bridge. And we just have it here today like this. Now this section of the wall is really, really crisp and awesome. I mean, just look at how well preserved this has been. You can see some hikers up in the distance. Hi guys. So Hadrian's wall was the epitome of how strong the Roman Empire was. Now they had disrupt down south, like I mentioned. North Africa and the Middle East never wanted to be part of the Roman Empire. I mean, I don't know if any parts of the Roman Empire wanted to be part of the Roman Empire, except for the Romans. So while Rome was handling all of that down south, they built this massive piece of infrastructure up north and they flexed. Nothing flexes bigger than a wall. So we're now walking along the part of the wall called the turf wall. And yep, this is a part of the wall that was built with turf, where we think they ran out of stone or ran out of workers to build the more stone part of wall. Now, eventually there was actually stone that was put in here, but it was mostly just this. I mean, maybe minus the sheep poop, but it's pretty cool. Now my guess, is that we're gonna be going all the way up there. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, 
but I can see my next trail marker sign. This is a pretty beautiful field. Okay, so if you're ever thinking about walking a public footpath or something like that, or even Hadrian's Wall up here in the UK, I've got to show you something that you should probably look for. So you will be crossing through public land and public right of way. And you have these little fences here that climb up. Here, we have a nice little trail sign to tell us where to go. But on these little uppies, we just climb up and then we climb down. Now they're not always all this nice because less popular trails just so need them. But more popular trails like Hadrian's Wall has really nice little ladders to climb over. And then after you climb over it, you wanna look for the path in the field that's pretty walked on. And this just helps preserve the land for the landowner and for the sheep and keep human traffic to a single area. So you wanna respect the land, respect the animals, Respect the landowner who lets you walk across his ground. Check out this little guy. Hi, you're in the vlog. Yeah. Are those your friends? There's three little guys over here. I like this little spotted brown and black. Sheep, I've not seen that before. Go play, go play with them. So we're just walking here along this wall. That's really not a wall, it's just a, a path, a forest path. Okay, so Hadrian's Wall Trail is kind of long and there's not a lot of towns in between sometimes. So sometimes you run across these things and it's really cool. Honesty, snack, shed. Now, what's an honesty thing or honesty bar? Well, let me show you. No, it's not that, that's the washroom. So Honesty Shack is where you have all sorts of different snacks and then you have the price list. So ice lollies are a pound, drinks are a pound, and then what you do, you can write a little note, you can take some snacks, and you leave your money here and it's all Honesty based. And I think that's really cool. So if you want something, make sure to bring cash because there's not like a tap bar thingy. But yeah, you can have some water, you can have a hot drink, you can have some cup of soup or really anything that you're looking for. Okay, so now we've popped out of the nice, beautiful fields that I was walking on. I'm looking behind me so I don't get hit by a car. As I mentioned, we're on the turf wall part. Well, that also meant that the Romans still built forts around here. Just because they didn't have stone for the wall doesn't mean they didn't have stone for the forts. And check out this little cute little tiny fort. Oh, there's a picture of what it used to be. Let's go look at it. Piper Site, also known as Turret 51A. So here we can see, so they had some fences stacked up here and these were really pointy at the top and they used really pointy things which operated like the world's first barbed wire. Pretty cool, right? So here you can see how high the, the turf was stacked up. And then in the middle of it, you see the little Roman fort. I think it'd be pretty cool to be in this fort. That's probably where the fire was over here. And then you'd be way up there staring at all of this green scenery. So, how many people actually worked on these walls? Well, they were built for 10,000 people to man the walls after they were built. Now, it's a bit unclear though, if 10,000 people actually worked on the walls or if it was built for that many and not that many worked. So, scholars are a little bit unclear. We did find one thing where there was like a census taken of all of the workers and only like 500 out of 700 workers showed up to work. What we don't know is what part of the walls those workers were going to. Was that for all of the walls? Was that for a little bit of them? What I wonder is were these walls ever attacked? I mean, I've been to Scotland and it's a pretty chill place. Like, I don't know if the walls were ever attacked. Okay, 
So I'm working on hitchhiking back to town and so far it's not working very well. People keep just walking by me, which I, I don't understand why. I'm just sweaty, stinky and hot. But check out what I just found. Look at this really old structure. It's definitely Roman and part of Hadrian's Wall and you can tell from the brickwork. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's go back, or rather, let's go forward and see what this other structure is in front of us. And maybe I'll find a participant to take me to a town with a bus. Ah, there's a butterfly chasing me. Okay, I may be exhausted. and failing to find a ride back to town. But this is beautiful. So we found more of the wall. We found another fortress. Okay. So I've entirely failed my hitchhiking adventure. Um, I keep trying and apparently I look scary, which is giving me really good opportunity to do other stuff. I hope the mic picks that up. I just scared a bunch of cows. Check this out. There's this cute little bench with all of these animals here carved alongside the road, the road. And a bunch of people are walking on the road driving on the road. Oh, and the other thing I have to say about this area. So this is like, I haven't seen this in the other places in the UK. Um, we have evangelism, Christian evangelism on, on the garbage bins. And the reason that I'm pointing this out is that in 900, 900 AD, like I guess between 500 and 900 AD, after the official Roman Empire dissolved, that's when the Roman church started to send missionaries and that sort of stuff up north. Because if they couldn't have an empire, at least they could spread their religion throughout the world and throughout north. So I find it interesting that as we're walking along the old Hadrian's Wall Trail, um, we also see like remnants of evangelism from the Roman church. <laughs> okay, okay, in the comments, don't, don't hate me for that. Um, all religions started from the same place. They all started from like the same person. Or I guess all religions of the same type started from the same place, all from the same person. Christ was not a Christian. Buddha wasn't a Buddhist. Muhammad wasn't a Muslim. But after that, then that's when it kind of forked off and did a bunch of other, you know, different religions and that sort of stuff. So all of this here from the Roman Empire. And this is the road that we're walking. The sun is setting. I did not plan on having this long of a walk today. My feet hurt. I've listened to some podcasts. I listened to my audiobook. Oh no, my camera strap is falling off me. Dude, these cows keep running away from me and I'm like, here, you can watch them run up the hill. Why are you running away from me, cattle? I'm so far from you. I'm not even a threat. You could trample me. Oh man, after being on that road for, I will not tell you how many kilometers, but it was enough. So it's nice, it's a one lane road. Cars are very respectful, they slow down. But there was this footpath that emerged. Look at this. Check it out. It's very, very cool here. So now I'm finally on a footpath. I don't have to worry about listening to cars. I can just dive into this podcast that I'm listening to. And we're gonna go see a waterfall in a second. And it looks like I'm within about, I think four kilometers from a bus stop, which I'm very excited about. It's just like very warm today and I'm very hot, but check out all of the scenery. 
I may have to put my jacket back on because there's some mosquitoes. Check out that waterfall. I mean, this is pretty. There's no color editing on the video, by the way, you guys. This is just like literally how green it is. It's actually greener because my camera's mediocre at everything. Oh, I want to jump in that. This is a beautiful, beautiful trail. Oh man. Ew. So I'm going to go hike this trail, enjoy this beauty, and I'll catch you when we get to a bus. I'm a shadow. Yay, I made it. I also don't know why my camera is so zoomy. I tried to take some photos at night the other day and my camera all got messed up. Anyway, I'm going to have a sit here as I wait for my bus to join me. I hope you enjoyed today's hike on Hadrian's Wall. I sure did. Um, if you come out here and do it, just make sure that you know the bus schedule and you know when they're coming, pack enough water, pack enough shoes, pack, you know, overpack. The trail is awesome. It's greatly, greatly manned. It's well kept. The trail is well kept. Um, there's food all over it. Like, and make sure you bring cash if you run into any of the honesty bars like we saw. Like, subscribe, drop a comment. Where else is cool to hike in the UK? Let me know. Ciao.